Hey, it's me, Mario Brown, and I'm here with my main man, Frank Kern. Um, hey, Frank, how's it going? It's going good. This is amazing. This Google Hangout thing. This is ridiculous. It's my first time. I'm a Google Hangout newbie. Mine too. I took a crash course in the morning, man. But I thought if it's good enough for the Dalai Lama and for Obama, man, I thought you know, good enough for us, man. You had me at Dalai Lama. You know, it looks like. I'm looking at your background here, and I'm looking at mine on my screen, and it looks like we're both broadcasting from separate underground spider holes or something. Exactly. <laughs> the, the barren walls, you know. Let us, let us tell you, the audience, how you too could one day work in a barren environment. <laughs> yeah. A spider hole. I hear you, but it is kind of cool, man. First time that I use it, but, you know, it's automatically recording. It's like you can bond with people. You can share your message. Um, I love it, man. Pretty awesome. Yeah, it is super sweet. I'm trying to stare at the camera and not at you. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I look at this little green dot right now. Oh yeah. Oh, okay, I tried. I tried to do the same. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, creating goodwill. Uh, you know, in the marketplace because we know that right now a lot of internet marketers, unfortunately, they just hammer their list with like you know promotions, promotions, promotions. And um, we both believe in creating goodwill. And you know, what's just your take on that? And um, why is it so critical? You think? Well, I think that's really, there's two answers in that question. Number one is we should define what an internet marketer really is. So there are multiple, what's the word, subcultures within that universe, you know. Uh -huh. There is the group of inter -mar internet marketing service providing companies similar to what you have with the mobile marketing agencies and so forth that actually do the marketing of stuff for people on the internet and then there are people who use the internet for themselves to sell their own products and services whether it's recipes or cottages by the lake or dog mm -hmm. training materials or whatever I have clients who sell all of those things strangely enough even manufacturing parts and stuff and then there's this little tiny microscopic part of that subculture that we're probably talking to now which is made up largely of uh, people who sell things on the internet about selling things on the internet. And in all three of those universes, so to speak, the concept of goodwill is very, very important. Um, made more so in the third one, the universe where it's a bunch of people selling stuff to each other about how to sell things to each other. Yeah. In that microcosmic world within the universe of internet marketing, there's a tremendous amount of hype and there's a lot of disappointment and a lot of frustration and a lot of bad information and I won't let this interview turn into a here's what they don't want you to know kind of thing I think we're simply stating things as they are I think everyone watching this would be like yeah I've just about had enough of that kind of stuff so in in that universe and in every other universe of internet marketing or direct response or offline marketing or simply business the absolute last thing you ever want to be is considered as just another blank. So in this world we would say we don't want to be considered just another internet marketer, right? Because usually the majority is what people are frustrated with, no matter what. So a way to combat that is to deliver massive goodwill. And a friend of mine by the name of Diego Rodriguez said a very, very accurate and profound statement when he was speaking to some of my clients a few months ago. He said that people will pay you in direct proportion to the amount of trust and confidence they have in your ability to deliver the results promised. So there are two ways that we can create that trust and manufacture it, so to speak. Way number one is the lazy way, which is what most quote unquote internet marketers do, which is to say, I'm amazing, buy my yeah. stuff, and by the way, if you don't buy it in the next 17.2 seconds, this downloadable file, we're, we're going to run out of these downloadable files. It's amazing. But this is the last PDF we have here, you know, and you better get it. So that's not even really creating confidence. You know, that's actually just creating scarcity and using psychological manipulation to get someone to buy. And there's, you know, schools of thought to say, well, that's immoral. And then there's schools of thought to say, hey, it's business and all advertising entails all of that. And you can be your own judge on that. It doesn't really matter. The other school of thought is, look, since we're online primarily and it costs us virtually nothing, to communicate with the marketplace, wouldn't it make a significant amount of logical sense to use that leverage of technology to help that person achieve what I like to call results in advance prior to asking for money? 
So most of us in the internet marketing world, and even in the professional services world, where we do something for a client, which is what you and I do a lot of, is we actually do things yeah. for clients. You know, those people who are giving us money, whether they're buying a how-to course or they're buying a service, are ultimately buying some sort of improvement. In our case, it's financial improvement through increased ROI on advertising or whatever. In other people's cases, it might be they want to buy a course on writing better sales copy, losing weight, getting the date they want, whatever it may be. Like no one ever goes out and buys a course or a service on how to make things worse, right? So they're out there looking to get some sort of improvement. So with that said, we know that in almost every circumstance in the world, the road to improvement is essentially like climbing over a mountain, you know, they have simply got to climb the mountain in order to get to the other side. You can't like burrow through the mountain. Such a shortcut doesn't exist. So my logic is, my philosophy has always been, if we get them part of the way over that mountain in advance of offering our services in exchange for money, by the time we do offer our services in exchange for money or our product or whatever, they'll be like, you know what, this dude's already helped me like three quarters of the way over the mountain. This guy's killer. So hell yeah, I'll do business with him. I trust him. He's already gotten me results in advance of trying to get my money. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to do online thanks to these modern whiz-bang technology like email <laughs> you know, and, and things like that and Google Hangouts where you can actually help people. So I believe and always have believed uh, even more so today than ever that your income is in direct proportion also to the amount in your goodwill bank account, which of course is a metaphor. Unfortunately, we can't go to the bank and deposit it, but the more goodwill that you have in your marketplace and community, the more confidence they have in you, the more they trust you, the more credibility they have, or the more credibility you have rather, and yeah. therefore, they're more likely they're going to be to do business with you. Awesome. Much better equation than hype and puffery and stupid crap. You know? I like that approach. I like that a lot, and I believe also the more value you add, you know, the more um, you get back from the marketplace, you know, Zig Ziglar said, the more people you help to get what they want, you get what you want. And it kind of goes along um, with what you just said. In just a second, we're going to talk about um, the Google bank account because I like, I like how you phrased that. Um, you know, some people always ask me, like, how do you create also Goodwill, for example, after the sale or once someone signed up? And I think, you know, there's some simple tactics that people can use. And it can be as simple as having an unadvertised bonus in your members area, you know, like one thing that I learned in the beginning when I learned about business was try to always give, you know, basically, and I'm trying to focus on the camera there as well, um, yeah. always try to give the customer more than what they expect. And even if it's just if they sign up and you, you know, like I said, you have an unadvertised bonus. If someone signs up for my consulting, I have some things sent out to them. It may be a book that I love, brownies and, you know, a gift basket. And it just creates massive, so it can be simple to creating goodwill. Some people think it has to be all complicated, right? Yeah, it totally doesn't have to. I mean, basically, you know, the quick and easy answer is don't be an asshole. <laughs> you know, which, welcome to the family version of this, uh, this hangout, you know. But really, if you're just cool to the customer and you over deliver, or hell, dude, actually, if you just simply deliver on your promises, which is like unheard of these days, especially in that space, you simply deliver on your promises, you're already generating massive goodwill. If you over deliver, you've gone completely way farther uh, than most people would ever do in, in terms of your quote unquote competition or whatever. And um, by all means, you know, one of the greatest things you could do is to simply be there when they need help and invite them to contact you or your help desk for support especially in the internet marketing community as it's defined by people who sell stuff on the internet about selling stuff on the internet you know yeah. that subsegment is is really where tremendous value can be given by simply being there for the customers holding impromptu uh, webinars customers only events Q&A calls and all that does ultimately is, yeah, sure, it's extra work. I mean, oh my God, you might have to get on a webinar for two hours. God forbid, you might have to skip the back-to-back -back episodes of Seinfeld and Lost, you know. But all that does ultimately is demonstrate to these people that, wow, that was a good decision I made, and I should make more decisions like that in the future, which of course leads to back-end revenue. But it's also important to create that goodwill, even if people don't buy, because, <clears throat> excuse me, if somebody doesn't buy today, it doesn't mean they're not interested. It just might not be the right time. You know, there were a lot of times in my life when I went to the BMW dealership and I did not buy the fleet of BMWs that I wanted to buy because I didn't have the money to do it. 
but I always had strong brand loyalty to that company. I always thought they were great cars. I was always treated well there. I always read about them in magazines. And once I got to where I could afford it, I've had three 7 Series, three X5s, two M5s, and two M3s before right, right. I moved on to other cars. But had I been treated badly and not been treated so well and had so much goodwill and given the hats and the keychains and invited to the events and everything, I might not have had such brand loyalty for as long as I did. So that's a, a common consumer example in the info marketing or internet marketing example. You can simply create goodwill and sell simultaneously by making every promotion you do follow a certain equation, which is basically statement of issue, solution to issue, and then offer for more help with the issue. So for example, just to wing it, it would be something like you go to a list, and let's say we're in the quote unquote internet marketing space wanting to sell that type of stuff, you know? We would go to a list and say, you know what? A lot of people are writing in saying they're having a hard time getting Google AdWords figured out, and you know what? Mm -hmm. It really is a pain in the ass. And that's why I've created this free training I'm going to hold for you on Tuesday night. Walks you through seven quick and dirty ways you can get set up with Google AdWords. And you hold the webinar and all crazy things, you actually teach these seven ways. You don't, you know, like give them one half of one way and then say, if you want the other six ways, you enroll in the you know upsell chain of death or yeah. anything. And then at the end of it you say, you know what, so there you go. And if you liked this, I think you'd really enjoy my extended course on how to master Google AdWords. And that course, here's what you get. And the guys who don't buy are still going to think you're awesome and they'll buy something from you later because you helped them in advance. And the ones who the time is right for are going to be way more likely to purchase now than they would be if you just straight hammered them with pitches. Okay. So that's my take on that. And it makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, talking about the promotions that you just said. So, for example, for me, you know, I do a lot of webinars, and every once in a while we just do like a totally, it's just content. We know we don't offer anything at the end, it's just massive goodwill, and people love it. And as a lot of my students ask me, basically, I'm an, you know, I'm an internet marketer, they say, and I'm not sure how many promotions should I send, how many um, offers should I send. And I also explain to them, you know, the bank account of goodwill. And, um, you know, what we'll send out emails, you know, the, the, the whole concept of the bank account of um, good, you know, goodwill, taking out of it, adding to it, you know, walk me through that. Well, that's, that is a really, really good point. So, but first of all, like right in the middle of that question, it froze for about 10 seconds. So I think what you, you asked me was people get weirded out about sending emails and want to know yes. how to do it properly without taking from the bank goodwill. So that's a good question. So here's the, and of course I have no statistical data to back any yes. stuff up with, you know. So here is my opinion on the matter created after doing this for 14 consecutive years. Um, if you just send a pitch counts as a promotion, that promotion can have varying negative effects on your bank of goodwill. It can be neutral, meaning it's like, hmm, pretty good. Like, so when we get something from Apple, for example, if you're a Mac user, for all you guys who love Mac out there, we're usually like, oh, yay, a Mac thing, because we love Mac so much that we can't wait for the new thing. So that is a goodwill positive promotion. Now, if Mac sent us 97 emails about the iPad mini or something in a 40-day period, we might not feel the same, right? Mm -hmm. So. At, at best, it's, it's goodwill neutral. At worst, it starts to deduct from that goodwill account, where it's like, okay, I signed up to this guy's list, and now I've gotten seven offers about this, three offers about the affiliate thing that everyone else is sending me offers of, and blah, 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 blah. And if you go down that road, you're constantly subtracting from the goodwill bank account, and the zero balance equates to just another internet marketer, which is the kiss of death. If you get to that status in your prospect's mind, you might as well hang it up. I'm sure you can sell them stuff, but you have to resort to increasingly stupid things to do so, such as hiring the, what was that one where it was like the stripper? You know, they had hired the actress to pretend like she was the stripper that got rich on the internet. I don't uh -huh. even remember what it was. But, you know, you have to resort to that. So you don't want to do that. So what you do is knowing that in many, many circumstances, and as a very generalized statement, our income is in direct proportion to the amount of offers we present to the marketplace. It presents the question of, well, shit, man, how do I send a lot of offers without being an asshole, basically? And the answer is you can do it constantly if you provide value in the offer. So my favorite method is video with, with content with mm -hmm. a pitch at the end, which is simply like, here's some help doing the thing you need help with. And by the way, if you want more help, 
I'm happy to provide it. You might like this. And that is the most soft sell thing you could possibly do, and people like it. Another example is when you engage your audience, such as my survey siphon technique, where you'll send a survey to your list saying, you know what, man, I want to make some free training for you guys, and I want to make sure I'm making the right stuff. If you could tell me the stuff you're interested in learning, and then they tell you what they're interested in learning, then you look at it and say, okay, there's a learning of this, 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 and this, you know, and assuming you know what you're talking about there. Yeah. You can make another video and share it with them and say, here's your results from the survey. Um, look, man, everyone said they were interested in learning about underwater jujitsu, and so here are seven techniques on underwater jujitsu. So you teach those, you know, make it good and complete and thorough and usable. Then at the end, simple pitch. Hey, thanks so much for taking the survey and tell me what you want to learn. If you like this, uh, then I think you'd really like this class I just created called How to Practice Jiu-Jitsu Underwater, which is, of course, you know, soon to be an Olympic sport in uh, Europe, uh -huh. where the capital of Europe City has already embraced it wholeheartedly. <laughs> okay, cool. I love it, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, now, you know, when you think about a lot of, you know, there's a certain percentage in our space, so to speak, they're, they're doing okay, some doing very well, and there's this huge majority that is kind of stuck, they're overwhelmed, and one of the things that always worked for me, and I think I heard also Kevin Nation talking about this, and that's just how I've built my business, is to take massive imperfect action, so when I created my first product, you know, it wasn't perfect at all, when I created my first website, even this Google Hangout, all my stuff, none of it is perfect, but I... I put it out there, it's good enough, and then I get feedback from the marketplace, and I get results, and it gives me like this positive momentum that keeps me going, going upwards. So it's imperfect action, and you know, everything I do, it's the same concept, it's, it's not perfect. And I see so many people there waiting for, until they're ready, or until the website is ready, or the product is perfect, and um, I think it would, if they just switch the mindset to taking imperfect action, it worked for me, I came with nothing, you know? And I think you saw my documentary and my life has changed and that's really the secret to me. What do you think, you know, with the people struggling right now, what's the big thing that you would share with them when it comes to a mindset of, um, you know, making money with the internet or if they're stuck, overwhelmed? What's your big thing that worked, you know, that made the big difference for you? Uh, it's interesting. You're, you've used the word several times now. The number one reason that people get stuck in the quote-unquote internet marketing world, and but when I say people, I usually mean this in the sense of people who are just getting started and trying yeah. to launch a business or whatever. The thing that impedes their progress the most is, in fact, overwhelm. And I know this because I've surveyed them to the tune of like a couple hundred thousand people across multiple customer lists from mine mm -hmm. to other well-known internet guys, etc. That's the number one thing, is overwhelm. And I think that that, in conjunction with something that's not talked about very much, which is fear, is the killer. So I'll address fear first. The fear that I'm talking about is typically, what if this does not work? You know, if this mm -hmm. doesn't work, and I think all of this is subconscious. I don't think anyone sits there and thinks, gosh, if this doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. But I think subconsciously, people might think that, you know what, if I try this and it doesn't work, that means that this dream that I've been holding on to is not real, and therefore, everything sucks. So instead of actually trying and risking that initial failure, I think people find it easier to act like they're doing something mm -hmm. through buying more stuff in order to almost, you know, metaphorically take that crack pipe hit. You know what I mean? It gives you, so they say, the quick little euphoria, and then you're, you're hosed again. And I think, well, all right, I'm going to buy this course now, and I'm really going to get started, and clearly I'm doing something because I just bought that course, and therefore it must mean I'm taking action. And then they look at the course, they're like, oh my God, i got to do all this stuff, what it doesn't work. They get freaked out, and then the cycle continues. So the cure for that is, to, and this is the fear part, I'll address overwhelm in a minute. The cure for that is to be okay with the fact that it is almost guaranteed not to work at first. Right? So we'll address the fear and overwhelm simultaneously. Overwhelm, right? So too many moving parts. The reason you have that is because you're on everybody's list and they're all sending you con conflicting advice, usually, telling right. you you got to have this thing versus that thing versus the other thing. you got to go to this system. If you don't use the red button, you're going to blow up and all this kind of crap. And how could anyone get anything done with that? Right? I mean, imagine like if you had 17 medical advisors giving you conflicting advice when you were sick. Nobody would get well. It's the same thing, metaphorically. So the first thing you got to do is just pick a path and stick with it, you know, and understand that whatever your gut's telling you is right is probably right. You know better than anybody else, intuitively. So 
The formula that's always worked really, really well for me is very simple. Cast a wide net to generate leads by giving something away for free, aka send them to an opt-in page to get a free report or free video, and then yes. email those guys offers to sell them stuff to help them even more than you already helped them. Two-step formula. That's it. Now, once you understand that you don't have to have 957 different moving parts, you know, 45 different WordPress plugins, the whiz-bang hosting, you know, the upsell, downsell, cross-sell, reverse monkey, Aikido script or whatever, you're going to be okay. Send some traffic to an opt-in page to give a free thing away and then offer to help the people even more than you already helped them for free. Now, with that said, now comes the fear. Okay, well, what if that's too simple? Well, what if it doesn't work? Here's my guarantee to you. My absolute, these results are typical. Take it to the bank. You can quote me on this guarantee. It's definitely not going to work the first time. <laughs> Yay, motivation. Right? <laughs> it's going to be a pain in the ass. You're going to send traffic, and the traffic might not opt in at the rate you want them to. Or they might opt in, but they might not buy yet. Totally normal. Rarely does this ever work the first time. What you're going to have to do is tweak your opt-in page through some different copy, and then Tweak your sales page through some different copy. And if you just keep doing that and stay the course, assuming you're selling something that people want, of course, you're finally going to get results. And that's really all there is to it. So the fear and the unwillingness to face the initial almost guaranteed failure is what prevents people from moving forward. And the metaphor I like to use is it's like someone wanting to be a prize-fighting boxer but being deathly afraid of getting punched in the face. It's like, dude, you're definitely going to get punched in the face. Oh yeah. Okay, if you want to be a fighter, you got to be willing to go in there and get punched in the face. And you get punched in the face long enough and punch the other guy in the face more than he punches you, you're going to win. That's the end of the game. And that's pretty much what this this whole business is really like, except what we don't actually punch anybody in the face. I hear you. And um, another you know, good point, I think, that you talked about this. And um, one thing that I realized is I see a lot of people on different forums and things like that, you know, complaining that they don't make enough money online. And you ask them, okay, what's your website? What's your offer? And they realize that they actually don't have a link online where someone can sign up or pay something, even if it's not even their own, own product, but they just don't have anything. So the first step is put something out there, even if it's not perfect. And also re regarding overwhelm, you know, I think it's proven that, that it's not about um, information. You know, I think it's proven. What I mean by that is if, I mean, we have never had so much access to information out there. If you look at all the books and the e-books and if you go to the bookstores, if it just was about the know-how, man, we would all be rich and happy and have a great lifestyle and, you know, and wealthy and, and famous because the books are all out there. So it's proven, you know, anyone watching this, this Google Hangout right now, I'm sure you have your hard drive full with all the information that you could ever need. But it's not so much the know-how, it's just like taking that step you know, implementing it and doing the little things because everything that's easy to do is also easy not to do. I, I read that in the book, um, The Slide Edge, which is an awesome. And talking about books, what are like, what's the top book for you when it comes to business and maybe, um, maybe let's say life? And uh, I think for business, for me personally, it's The Go Giver, and I learned about that at Mass Control 2.0 actually in San Diego. And that's um, yeah, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, it's really a good one. Uh, well, what about you? you know, what's the best book? I think I've read like two business books in my life. That being one, I can actually tell you all of the business books I've read. So there's that one. There's Dan Kennedy's No BS Time Management, uh, Dan Kennedy's No BS Wealth Attraction, and Scientific Advertising by Claude Hopkins. Um, all of them are exceptional depending on what skills you want to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was talking to someone who was very, very new to this whole concept, I would probably direct them towards the time management and then wealth attraction, both by Dan Kennedy, who's a longtime teacher of mine. Um, and then over to scientific advertising by Claude Hopkins. I think if you read that, it's hard to read, by the way, because it's back when they talked weird. And the diction is so bizarre yeah. in there, you know. It's, it is tough. Uh, talking to someone from, you know, 1922 or something, they just write strangely. But other than that, the information, if you digest that and actually do what he's talking about in there, you'll be able to build campaigns superior to what 99% of Madison Avenue ad agencies do, which is great, you know. So I would say those three, Go Giver was pretty good too. I like, I found that to be more inspirational than yeah. tactical. You know, I'm more of a tactics guy. I like to be like, okay, what did you do? How did you do it? How can I do it too? Type of model or you know, really, my motivation is this thing called if I don't get to work, then I won't have my toys anymore. So I don't need any more motivation. Yeah, I, I got three kids, you know, I don't need any more motivation than that. I got plenty. Um, so the tactical books are, are those. In terms of the life stuff, man, gosh, dude, um, 
probably the most impactful book I ever read in that category was one by, uh, this is a paradox, really. It is a little old Jewish lady who teaches Buddhist meditation. Her name is Sylvia Borstein, and her book was called It's Easier Than You Think. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely love that book. And the message of the book was like, basically, dude, relax. It's cool. You know, and it helps keep you from getting in your head. I don't know if you do this. I totally do. I'll obsess and get weirded out about things. You're like, well, what if this isn't working? What does that really mean? Oh, yeah. You know, and that book, like, helps stop that, you know, which therefore can lead to more concentrated action, focused thought, et cetera, on the simpler things, which is to generate leads by giving something away for free that helps people and then offering to help them even more in exchange for money. Magical, mysterious, brand new formula. 3.0. Got it, got it. Very good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some more of this energy drink here, so I'll give you more. Well, and by the way, if anyone's wondering, I'm holding this giant phallic-shaped uh, microphone, so you can hear me. Otherwise, it would be right here in front of the thing. So if anyone's seen this thing waving up in the bottom third, you know, I am happy to see you, Mario, but I'm unfortunately not that well endowed. You know, those damn pills they sold me on the Internet didn't work. I hear you. Um, so, Frank, as you know, um, you know, you basically you disappeared from the internet marketing space. You know, you usually don't do this, these kinds of interviews. You don't go to events. And I have an event coming up in San Diego in May, and I think Google Hangout allows me to use this um, fancy thing here. Let's see, does that work? Look at okay. that thing. Yeah, it's um, online marketing mastery. It's going to be May um, second till the fifth, and um, you decided you're going to be there. And you know, I was just wondering. Um, what are you going to talk about, and also, you know, why are you excited to come? Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm excited to come. First of all, I know you attract a different crowd, so your your guys, from what I have observed, do stuff which is great. You know, you and I have the same business type. Ultimately, look, free cat. You got <laughs> cool. If you our downline today. I'll throw in this cat. <laughs> jumped in my lap. Perfect time. Her name is Pearl. She squeaks a lot. Anyway, so we're pretty much the same where, I, you know, I would talk about this stuff anyway to the right person. You know, yeah. like when I go to a party and a dude's got a jewelry store and we start talking about business, I'm ultimately will end up being like, oh, dude, well, what's the most profitable thing you sell? Well, you know, how many people do you get in a day? Do you have any names and addresses? Like, what if you sent this, you know, and it's just, and they're like, God, would you please leave me alone about this stuff? You know, or sometimes they actually do it. Of course, the worst Worst advice you could give someone is free, unsolicited advice, even though it, it could be good, you know. But so I really enjoy that. So I'm happy to go there because the guys that go to your stuff and your crowd do things and they actually do business, and it's just a, it recharges my batteries personally. I get a lot of energy from being in that type of environment. Nice. Plus, it doesn't hurt that it's in my neighborhood, uh, you know. Yeah. And I like what now the cat has just fallen off of my lap and bedding her claws in my legs there. So. A pint of blood now for anyone who, who <laughs> wants to join today. Here she is. She's back. So I'm, I'm happy to be there among those people. And I like what you're doing. I think that uh, you are dramatically different from a lot of the people that occupy that space. Uh, you're someone who, instead of trying to prey on the new people, actually genuinely wants to help them because you've been in their shoes. Uh, well, let's, let's face it, you've been in significantly worse shoes than most people have ever been in. You know, most I've had a customer, I remember when... I've got cat hair now floating in front of me. I, I remember when I was selling to uh, to that marketplace years ago. I actually had someone write in complaining that they had spent eight hours already trying to implement the program and hadn't gotten any results. You know, so I wish I could take them, go back in time, and be like, I'd like to introduce you now to my friend Mario Brown here, who makes your pathetic eight-hour complaint look like a walk in the park. You know, so I, you're telling me you're in your air-conditioned home here in the United States of America using Wi-Fi and, and eating, uh, you know, Starbucks donuts. Nuts you're fussing about your eight hours, you know. So I like what you're doing, and I'm, I'm really, really happy to help. In terms of what I'll be talking about there, is really how to systematically deploy results in advanced technology uh, and campaigns. So there is really a structure that can be used to deliver that type of goodwill, to create that type of credibility, and to a degree, celebrity. I don't want to say automatically. It does take work, but it takes work one time to set up the assets, meaning the videos and the marketing pieces, et cetera, to generate that kind of stuff. So I'll be talking about how to do that and also how to attract more premium priced clients and really take your game to another level. You know, yeah. so if you oftentimes when people complain about their customers, you know, I want to say, well, you didn't, no one's, no one's forcing you to get those. You could get other people. If you want someone to pay you a million dollars, you could become valuable enough to charge that and then go charge that. So I'd also like to share some ideas on 
on how to really up the game, deliver better service, free cat training if you want. <laughs> I guess all you can see is the cat tail. So now I've got this and then this <laughs> cat tail in the bottom third. So Oh, here she is. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. No, that's cool, man. I'm really excited um, about the event. And uh, for anyone who sees this hangout, I mean, I hope we could inspire um, other marketers in our space, you know, to also create goodwill out there because that's what it's really about. And I told you that I really believe that there's a little bit of a lack of um, leadership in our space. And, you know, I want to step in there and I want to encourage other people to do things right and to create goodwill and, you know, to over deliver with their products. And um, that's what I want to talk about at the event. And, you know, as you can see here in the URL, it's onlinemarketingmastery.net in San Diego, May the 2nd till the 5th. And if you guys want to hear more from Frank and for myself about this and webinars and all the cool stuff and creating goodwill, then cool. And if not, that's cool too. And we stay friends. Um, hey, Frank, I want to say thank you so much. It was awesome. And um, I'm looking forward to our next hangout, man. All right, cool. And everyone say goodbye to my invisible cat, Pearl, here. Remember, first five people who join our MLM downline get a free cat. Now, which piece <laughs> of the cat remains to be seen? But uh, that's actually a terrible joke. <laughs> <laughs> Take it back. But anyway, say bye, Pearl. Bye. Everybody. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. See you all.